I just had to have a look at the back panel. It's a very simple circuit. A common wire at the top which connects to all the lamps. Then underneath individual wires for each lamp that travel through the trailing cable from the lift car to the motor room. They terminate directly to the carriage selector which I have already explained in a previous video. More later because first we need to get these bulbs working again. This is how bright the bulbs are pre-repair. Working on the outside now. Well, the truth is, there is obviously a connection issue, but I personally think it's a short circuit, which I will explain with an animation a bit later. The strange thing is, whatever we did in the lift car has also fixed the landing bulbs and the call button lamps. The only ones that don't work are obviously blown anyway. This would normally mean the bulbs are wired in series, like the old Christmas tree fairy lights. Not in this case, as I will explain later. My conclusion is, this is actually a short circuit. What have I fixed? <laughs> This is my little animation of how I think we fixed the lamps and bell. This comes from my experience of being an engineer and from having a personal interest in creating circuits with relays since I was a kid. 
On the left, this is a standard lift setup with the motor room overhead. The right represents the lift car with the floor position lamps and of course the bell. The red wire is common to the bell and all the lamps. It originates from the controller cabinet power supply. This is easier to visualize as a battery, but in reality, this is probably 110 volts AC, not a DC battery. Most devices are connected to a relay in the controller cabinet. However, this is not the case for an old Otis lift, as the floor position lamps connect directly to the carriage floor selector. As usual, drawing it like this is easier to visualize, but the principle is still the same. This video explains about the Otis carriage selector. See the link above or in the description. When the lift moves, it moves a smaller scaled version of the lift in the shaft. This is the path used by the floor indicator bulbs. As the carriage goes up, the path is changed to light the next bulb. Each circuit has a fuse, which protects the circuit against overloads, creating a short circuit or an overload that pulls too much current through the fuse will melt the fuse wire and cut the circuit. Note that a fuse is again easier to visualize, but a different overload device may be in use. Here is an example of a circuit in operation. Note that the red wire brings the voltage to all the bulbs and individually the bulbs are switched back to the power supply. The position lamps on the ground floor connect to the same supply, so effectively they are doubled up with the position lamps in the lift car. It would appear that the call button lamps also connect to the same supply, as we fix them at the same time. To save this diagram becoming too complex, I'm going to talk about just the lift car fixtures. At some point, the metal work of the lift is connected to ground, as so are most metal things, which can potentially create a short circuit all the way back to the cabinet. So what's going on with the Otis lift we um, fixed? My theory is the red wire or the supply from one of the circuits was touching onto the metal work of the lift. You'd have thought this would have caused a short circuit which would have blown the fuse, but you have to factor in resistance. The metalwork of the lift could be classed as a dirty earth. Also, the cable route is relatively long, which will also create some resistance. Factor in the unclean path from the metalwork to the building earth. This may create enough resistance so that it may divert current away from the bulbs and bell and not create enough of a current demand to activate the dash pot, circuit breaker or the fuse, whichever device is in use. So what you have instead is a dimming of the lamps, just enough to light the lamps, but not high enough to operate the bell or the large direction arrow bulbs, which are probably more wattage. The Mr. Matter Mr. Che fix of moving the floor position panel left and right a bit may have removed this high resistance short circuit, which now means the supply is no longer grounded. Now the current can resume its path directly to the bulbs and bell. The floor position lamps on the ground floor would also benefit as these are connected in parallel to the same supply in the motor room. Right, so what else could it be? Could this be a loose connection rather than a short circuit? This would make more sense to the average viewer. On the left, floor position lamps. Let's pretend three landings have them. On the right, the floor position lamps in the lift car. For a loose connection to affect all bulbs, they would have to be wired in series or in a daisy chain. One bulb after the next. Then back up the lift shaft to the floor selector in the motor room. This completes the circuit. This would be the same method as the old Christmas tree lights. Here are a couple of examples of a completed circuit with the up bulbs. And first floor bulbs. A loose connection in the lift car would then affect the whole circuit including the bulbs on the landings. More to the point, a high resistance connection would cause all lamps to dim. There are two problems with this theory. First, the voltage is divided each time it goes through a bulb. You'd need a different voltage bulb depending on the total bulbs in the circuit. Secondly, if one bulb blows, it would break the circuit and all the others would stop working. 
Then you'd have a job on your hands to find the blown bulb. This is exactly the problem I'm having this evening with these old Christmas tree lights. Might be time to throw these away and get some LEDs. I will make the odd exception here and there, but I prefer bulbs. Conclusion, this is not how it's wired. Now I'm not saying I'm 100% right here, but it's just a theory that makes logical sense. And I hope I'm right. I'm open to other people's theories here, but just saying it's a loose connection, I'm afraid doesn't qualify unless you can explain how a loose connection in a lift car can affect all the other bulbs on a different circuit. What I'm saying is, you need to have some experience or knowledge of series and parallel circuits rather than just guessing. Next time, it's the completely over the top race between the new Kone and the old Otis. Which one will win? Also, please check out this video of the old express lift at Broad Street Mall. You won't find it anymore as it was modernized a few years ago. Another old lift bites the dust. This is the guy that helped me with the filming of this video and shared the excitement of fixing the Otis bulbs. His channel name is Ant Harrow. And of course, yes, I did ask the building owner about a lift motor room visit. An update next time. Thanks for watching.